Hey guys, this is Danny, and this is Shotcaller. Uh, Shotcaller is a translator, basically, from a fixed 4x4 grid controller, whether it's software or hardware-based. And um, it basically lets you access a lot more shots uh, from one shot or Koala or any anything that has got more than 16 hits assigned to it um, by separating them into specific pairs. Let me just show you an example. Uh, here, you'll see as I hit these, they're just chromatically going up. Ending here. But there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shots or seven above this one that we can't quite reach. So what I can do is add seven more steps to this, which effectively does nothing, except when I change this, which offsets that specific pad to one of those seven extra shots. Um, another example is if I go down here and I put eight on this one, you'll see that this, which was number 38, is now 45. So I've basically created a gap between 37 and 45, which is accessed by these steps here. And you'll notice here there's a gap of four between them now because I've gone up to step four. And this is now playing the top three without actually adding extra shots to the top like we just did. So. These steps can be controlled externally by a CC. Um, I've got here Drambo, which is going into Mosaic as well. And I've got Prism. Uh, let's say I, on, on shot three, I'll just put some, some hits in here. Uh, okay, let's go. So now if I go into Drambo, because it's sending uh, the CC corresponding to the number over to Mosaic, if I change the number three, it's accessing all the hits. So you could put an LFO on this to randomize it if you wanted. But you can also parameter lock these individual hits. So if you go in here and create a fresh one by eight, uh, what um, Prism does is it just creates quickly eight CCs. And because they go from one to eight, these correspond to um, step one to eight. Uh, so all I need to do again is if I just play with number three, So now these can be parameter locked to individual individual hits like that. Okay, so that is using the CCs here, um, and then if you copy this and paste it on the next one, Prism's clever enough to automatically add CC nine to sixteen here. So now if I went here and added three, uh, which I'll go here and add those. And then in here, I'll put on CC 14. Obviously, you can change the velocities of everything. So basically, now using just two pairs, we've accessed all of these different um, shots. Simple. So that is local mode. That's the simple default mode. Um, but there's more to it. So if I hit the shift key here, it goes into settings. Just quickly, I'll show you that if you touch this knob and move it, it will show you some instructions that I've written, just um, if you want to look through those. 
but hit shift again, hit shift again. Basically, the input number is the first chromatic number of your controller. So if you've already got a controller set up from note 48 or 60 or whatever it might be, just make this match your controller input. The output matches this starting note in this case, but you can change it to whatever you need to based on what instrument you're using. CC1 is the default for pad 1, and then it goes up to CC16. But if you've already got a hardware controller that is mapped to CC100 to 116, you can just change this number here. Now, zero is reserved sort of, I mean, it will still work, but I've reserved it for what I'm about to show you, which is global mode um, and what that does. So one of the things you can do here is change between a 16, 8, or 4 pad setup. And basically, each one can be split down into as many sub-steps um, as would fill up 128 notes. So if I see this local knob here, I'm going to just tweak it. So now it says global. Now I've gone into global mode, the notes have all changed. And on a 16 by 16 grid, the maximum global is eight, because eight times 16 is 128. But if I go down to global one, what you'll see is now that these will be down here, these will be split eight apart, regardless of what this setting is. But what it means is that if if I it's set to global one at the moment, so I can't actually set it to more than one shot for this one kit. But if I go to global, say three, then although they're still the same note, this last knob here changes the step of every pad together. So effectively, you can build a kit. Um, at position 0, 8. So you could put all your snares in this position 0 to 8, then put 8 to 16 as snares, put 24 to 32 as hi-hats, and you build a kit that way. And then what you can do is, just by changing this, it will play the second note from each of those groups, or the third note from each of those groups. Now, the reason to set this correctly is because this is controlled by CC0, and it will split automatically value 0 to 127 across this knob. So in this case, it will just be three hits across all of these pads, but you can go up to 8 on a 16. If you go to 8, you can then have 16 per pad. So now you'll see that the second pad is over here instead of where it was halfway along. Um, and then you can go to to different different um, notes on that particular hit. So these can be individually still changed by their corresponding CC one two three four five six seven eight here. So if you want to change individual kit pieces, you can do that. Um, as soon as you change this, it will snap all kits to to their second third whatever position you've got this set up to to be. Um, and in something like Prism, you can also then assign the CC not to um, individual steps, but to entire patterns. Um, and that means that you could have pattern one playing kit one, which will be the first note, and then you've got pattern two playing kit two. You can do the same thing in Drambo using this. Um, so, oh, sorry, this global setting, which is going to control that. Um, and that means that you can have a um, parameter locked to a, um, a whole sequence, which will change the kit just for that sequence and then snap back to another kit. So the reason for this is that then you'll see that this note is now up there on an eight grid. And there's 16 more notes after that. So if I change this to 16 and this to 16, now this will be the very last available note. So it basically maximizes the spread of notes so that you can use every single note on the keyboard to play something. Um, and that's basically what one shot is. So 
wonderful at because <laughs> um, you can just drag these onto here and then make variations of the same one, tune them differently, add different um, filters or effects. You can pitch it. So um, this goes to, oh, why is that playing this one? Interesting. Oh, it was set. <laughs> Sorry, I was confusing myself with my own script, but basically this is playing the 16th slot of that first pad. So let me just go back down to here and bring this back down to three. Now this will play those three hits. And then this will start here. So you can just add different things to there. Let's say hi-hat there. And then, oh, I moved it, moved it. Oh, let's put a snare here. So now this will play that. And first slot, second slot will play so this is probably getting really long, and you probably get the idea. But with four, you can have up to 32, and that equals 128. Now, if you're using this with Koala, um, I've made a bunch of templates. I've got one for Octocron. I've got a bunch of different ones for Koala specific to how many pads are currently being used because it won't let me drag with the mouse. Um, if you load up, so Koala has got four banks of uh, 16, which is only 64. So effectively, if you're using Koala, you need to, in one shot, in sorry, in shot Koala, you need to set the number of pads as a maximum half of what's available, uh, because you only want to access 64, not 128. So if I'll go down to four here, um, that means that now these are accessing 64 different notes. And if I go here to settings, extras, and I'll import a MIDI map, I've created MIDI maps and the Drambo um, and the Octocron thing, which I'll, I'll put this whole package on my coffee page. But you've got Koala 8, Koala 4, and Koala 16. So let's load 16. It's loaded the mini map. And now let's just quickly fill this up with sound. They all sound the same, but they're, they are slightly different. Um, and so if I route this now to Koala, okay, so I've B. <laughs> it's because I'm in bank B. Right. So uh, let's and go back to bank B. So now this is bank B. Each one has got four shots because that's half of eight. So up to a maximum of four. And this is go two, three, four. Now, if you ind move individual ones, now this will play a different selection. And again, you can use uh, an LFO or something to make a round robin type situation. Um, so yeah, I think this is probably getting long. This is available on patch storage. Um, I'll link below. I'll also link to the coffee page uh, where you can just download all these templates I've made for free. Uh, but if you fancy it, you can buy me a coffee while you're there. And um, I'll see you around. Cheers. Hope it's helpful.